Syncor presents Successful Video Servicing with the Syncor VA62 Universal Video Analyzing System. This tape explains the features of the VA62 and its accessories to help you become more successful in video servicing. It will explain the four main sections of the VA62 panel and then show how each function operates. Then it will show you how the accessories let you expand your video servicing into new areas. Finally, it will give some tips on learning to use the VA-62 effectively. Successful video servicing requires efficient test methods. Newer video circuit designs have made the need for better methods more important. Here are a few examples. Higher reliability means fewer service calls per set. This means that you don't see as many repeat problems and reduces your ability to depend on memory of similar problems you've seen in the past. Since there are few plug-in components and modules, you must troubleshoot to the component level rather than swapping parts. Then think about the new technologies. TV receivers often use comb filters, automatic color controls, picture detail enhancers, and separate red, blue, and green inputs for better resolution. Video includes more than television sets. Today we have video recorders, MTS stereo receivers, and computer monitors. All of these new video technologies stretch older servicing procedures. The VA-62 Universal Video Analyzer simplifies the troubleshooting of any video circuits introduced in the past 30 years. How much difference can the VA-62 make? A survey of over 1,500 Sencor customers shows that it increases productivity by an average of 54% compared to their previous methods. A 54% improvement can double your profits. How? Look at these figures. According to NESDA, the National Electronic Service Dealers Association, the average TV technician repairs four TV receivers per day. A 54% increase raises the average from four repairs per technician to six. How can finishing just two extra sets each day double your profit? Simple. Your overhead costs, like rent and lights, are already covered in the first four sets. Parts costs are the only added expense on the last two. All the remaining income becomes extra profit. The VA-62 makes it easy to finish those extra two sets. It is a universal video analyzer that helps you isolate troubles in any video system that uses NTSC television standards. Let's begin our explanation of the VA-62 by studying its front panel. Then you will know how each feature helps you be more successful in video servicing. Think of the VA-62 as having four main sections. The RFIF generator, the video pattern generator, the drive signal section, and the meter. We'll start our front panel tour with the RF generator, located here in the upper left-hand corner. The RF generator has three main uses. First, it lets you do a complete performance test without taking the back off the set. Second, it provides the reference needed to hold circuits in sync while using signal substitution. Third, it helps you isolate tuner problems. Many of these problems are more common in digital tuners than in conventional models. Here, for example, is a common fault. A defect in a tuner control module only affects one line running into the digital countdown IC. This affects every fourth channel, or possibly every sixteenth channel. How would you find this channel grouping unless you can test all the channels? In addition, most digital tuners have cable channels. You need cable channels to confirm all the tuner bands work correctly. To make matters worse, some cable systems use shifted carriers. 
Have you ever heard customers complain that some cable channels don't tune correctly? The receiver's automatic fine-tuning circuits must have enough range to receive shifted cable channels, and you need some way to test them. The three VA62 RF generators duplicate every VHF, UHF, and cable channel. The standard TV generator produces every VHF and UHF channel. Your benefit is being able to find which channels are involved with a tuner problem. The standard cable function generates non-shifted cable channels. This lets you test the cable-ready tuners. The programmable cable generator duplicates any cable shift. You can shift the frequency of any cable channel above or below the normal broadcast carrier. Here's how you use these three generators. Set the RF-IF signal switch to one of the first three positions, standard TV, standard cable, or programmable cable. Select channel numbers with the keyboard, or step through channels with the up-down buttons. When using standard TV, the VA62 automatically steps between the VHF and UHF generators. By the way, remember to move the RF cable to the correct antenna input when the TV or VCR has two connectors. In the standard cable mode, the channels from 14 through 73 produce cable frequencies. To make matters easier, the generator automatically switches among the three cable bands, mid-band, super-band, or hyper-band, as you change channels. Shifts for the programmable cable function are easy to enter. The VA62 stores the programmed shifts into permanent memory, so you don't have to supply 24-hour power or reprogram the channels each time you turn on the power. Here's all you need to do to program a channel offset. Select the channel and then press the plus-minus key on the VA62's keypad. As you see, the left-hand digital display changes from a channel number to a frequency. Enter three digits representing the desired offset into the keypad. For example, to program a shift of 1.25 MHz, press the numbers 1, 2, and 5. The left-hand display momentarily blanks to acknowledge your instructions. Programming of that channel is complete when the channel number returns. Here, for example, is a TV which works fine when picking up non-shifted channels, but it does not provide a clear picture when tuning a shifted channel. Your customer will have trouble using this set on some cable systems until you fix the automatic fine-tuning circuits. Each channel has its own memory, allowing each to have a different offset frequency. For your convenience, an area of the pull chart is reserved for you to write the values you've programmed. The three VA62 RF generators help find tuner-related problems. The IF generator simplifies troubleshooting the IF circuits. You need this VA62 function because signal tracing works poorly in IF circuits. The main problem is the low-level 45 MHz amplitude-modulated signal. Most scopes cannot lock to the IF signal. Even if your scope can display the signal, you cannot be sure it is correct because scope probes often load the tuned IF stages, making the scope waveform questionable. Schematics usually do not show IF waveforms for this reason. The VA62's IF generator provides a proven way to troubleshoot IF troubles. The VA62 produces a crystal-controlled 45.75 MHz IF video carrier modulated with any VA62 video pattern. You can inject this IF signal directly into any IF stage. As you see here, the RF-IF level switch shows the correct signal level for the first, second, or third IF input. Watch the TV screen as you inject the signal into an IF stage. If a picture appears, you know that every circuit from your IF injection point to the picture tube works. If the pattern does not come through, you have injected the signal before the bad stage. 
Here is an example. Injecting the second IF signal into the second IF amplifier stage produces a video pattern. But reducing the signal level to low and moving to the first IF stage shows no picture. This confirms the first IF stage is bad. Use this same approach to isolate any IF problem. In addition to finding bad IF stages, the VA-62 lets you easily adjust IF traps. When a TV or VCR is used with an antenna, traps can be out of alignment without affecting the picture. Most antennas have no adjacent channels strong enough to cause interference. If your customer hooks the TV or VCR to a cable system, the poorly set traps allow interference, since nearly every cable channel has a healthy adjacent sound and picture carrier. The only way to be sure each TV or VCR you repair will produce a clean picture when your customer hooks it to cable is to check the adjustment of the IF traps. The VA-62's patented trap setting signals let you adjust IF traps by simply looking at the TV screen. You don't need a sweep generator, a bias supply, or an oscilloscope. Here's how the VA-62 trap setting system works. Each of the three trap signals is made up of two carriers. One is a modulated video carrier at a preset 1000 microvolt level to hold the AGC circuits at a fixed gain without needing external bias. The second carrier is a crystal controlled sample of the interfering signal the trap should reject. The interfering carrier can be adjusted in amplitude and modulated to make it easier to see. To set a trap, connect the VA-62's IF cable in place of the tuner cable. Select the correct trap frequency and set the VA-62 attenuator controls to their lowest output settings. Slowly increase the output level until you see a small amount of interference in the picture. Leave the signal at that setting and then adjust the trap until the picture shows the least interference. That's it. Use this procedure to dynamically set all standard frequency traps in TVs or VCRs. If you run into a trap at a non-standard frequency, use the VA-62's programmable IF generator. This generator produces frequencies from 35 to 50 megahertz. To program the generator, move the RF-IF signal switch to the programmable position and enter four numbers into the keypad that represent the frequency. Tuner and IF troubles have always been tough to troubleshoot because of the high frequency signal. The VA-62's RF-IF generators let you isolate these problems quickly. The second VA-62 section provides the video patterns needed to dynamically test all of the video circuits. The VA-62's video pattern generator is located here in the upper right-hand corner of the panel. This generator modulates the RF and IF generators and supplies video to the drive signals, the VCR standard jack, and external accessories. Two of the eight video patterns help you isolate problems in the luminance or black and white stages. The others test the color circuits. Luminance patterns test the IF stages, the video detector, and the video amplifiers. They also test the special circuits which give improved picture detail. For example, comb filters, which extend video bandwidth by nearly 40%, need properly phased video patterns for testing. Another new technology circuit is the synchronous video detector. These circuits give improved contrast and reduced detector noise. But component drift or misalignment can cause a 10 to 30% loss in the picture's brightness range. The right video pattern lets you set the tuning. General color patterns let you test conventional VCRs and set their internal controls. Improvements such as high Q circuits give better picture quality. Your video patterns should test for this better quality to confirm the circuits are working. 
And the new Super VHS and ED Beta formats extend video all the way to 4.5 MHz, requiring even better video patterns. The two VA62 luminance patterns which take care of all these needs are the EIA 10 bar staircase and the multiburst bar sweep. The 10 equal steps of the staircase pattern range from pure black to 100% white. To test video circuits, adjust the brightness and contrast controls. If you don't see all 10 brightness levels in the picture, a luminance stage is bad. The trouble is often poor synchronous detector alignment. To find out, connect your scope or waveform analyzer to the detector output. The waveform should show a linear staircase, as you see here. The coil's tuning may have changed because of drift or improper adjustment by another technician. As you see here, misadjusting the detector coil only one half turn causes the top three bars to blend to one level. This translates to a 30% loss in brightness range and produces a washed out picture. The second luminance pattern is the multiburst bar sweep. This exclusive pattern lets you dynamically test the video bandwidth of IF stages and video amplifiers in TVs and VCRs. The pattern has 10 bars which interrupt the video at different rates. They range in frequency from 0 through 4.5 megahertz. The VA62 generates each bar at the same level so that losses in the video circuits change the relative amplitudes. The multiburst bar sweep interrupter buttons identify the location of each bar on the TV screen. Press a button to see which bar turns black. Look at the markings next to the button to learn the video frequency and the IF sideband frequency represented by that bar. You confirm the video amplifiers and IF stages have normal bandwidth by examining the bars on the TV screen. The bars for frequencies passed to the picture tube form vertical stripes. If a circuit restricts a video frequency, the stripes in the corresponding bar blend together and form a gray bar. A color receiver should produce detail from 0 to 3 megahertz. If the first seven bars do not all show stripes, there is a problem somewhere in the IF or video stages. The 4 and 4.5 megahertz bars normally are filtered by the IF stages. Some monitors with direct video inputs which bypass the tuner and IF stages may show detail in these last bars. In addition to these two luminance patterns, the VA62 has six color patterns. Convergence patterns fill the first four positions of the video pattern switch. Use the single dot for static convergence and the single cross to center yokes. Use the crosshatch or dots patterns for the dynamic convergence, depending on which you like best. A dot size control lets you adjust the width of the lines and dots in all four convergence patterns for any width you want. The color bars function produces the 10 bar gated rainbow color bars pattern originally developed by RCA. This popular pattern has been the main test signal used in video servicing for over 20 years. Sencor added three improvements to the original design to bring the pattern up to date for the newest video circuits. The first change increased the color saturation for better results in VCR testing. Second, the VA62 locks the phase between the color signal and horizontal sync to test comb filters. Third, the VA62 uses a true 3.58 MHz color burst which also improves VCR testing. Any color bar pattern tests color circuits for gain and phase response. They do not test for bandwidth since the wide color bars need less than 100 kilohertz of frequency response. That's why the VA62 also has the chroma bar sweep pattern. With the 3, 3.5 and 4 megahertz buttons released, the chroma bar sweep produces a pure white screen. The 100% white level ensures correct peak-to-peak -peak levels when you are measuring signals in VCRs. Depressing the 3.5 MHz button places a 75% saturated cyan bar in the center of the screen. VCR color alignment instructions only reference the cyan bar of the NTSC signal. Since the chroma bar sweep's center bar is identical to the cyan bar of the NTSC color bar pattern, you can use it for all VCR testing and alignment. 
Pressing the 3 MHz button adds a second bar, 1 half MHz lower in frequency than the color subcarrier. Pressing the 4 MHz button adds a third bar, 1 half MHz above the subcarrier. The 1 MHz spread between these two bars test for full chroma bandwidth. This pattern is very easy to interpret. You compare the intensity or saturation of the three bars right on the TV screen. When the color circuits work correctly, the three bars have the same color saturation. Compare the bars by slowly turning down the color level control. All three bars should turn gray or lose all color at about the same time. If one bar has less color, use signal substitution to find out which stage has limited the bandwidth. Watch for an improvement in color balance as you inject at test points from the video detector to the color demodulators. The video pattern switch selects which video pattern feeds the VA62 generators. Any of the selected patterns can be modified with the two adder buttons located in the upper right hand corner of the VA62 panel. TV receivers with digital vertical circuits have two operating modes. One mode senses interlaced sync coming from a broadcast station or VCR. The other mode detects the non-interlaced sync from computers, color bar generators, or video games. Interlaced signals use the TV's digital countdown circuits for true interlaced scanning. Non-interlaced signals cause the circuits to use a conventional triggered vertical oscillator. Both modes must work correctly to display all video. Here's an example. This TV works correctly with an interlaced antenna signal and loses sync with a non-interlaced video game signal. The VA62's interlace adder helps find the trouble. Some TV receivers use the vertical interval reference or VIR signal transmitted during vertical blanking to automatically control color. Off-the-air signals were the only source of VIR before the VA-62. Add or remove the VIR signal as needed to track down a problem in these automatic color circuits. Each video pattern helps you identify symptoms by watching the TV screen. It is just as important to be able to find problems in any of the TV or VCR's audio stages. The VA-62 provides complete audio troubleshooting signals as well. The audio switch at the left of the VA-62 panel selects which one of the four audio frequencies, 333 Hz or 1, 5 or 7 kHz, feed to the VA-62 audio outputs. Audio takes three different forms inside a receiver. It combines with the video as it passes through the tuner and the video IF stages. It then separates into a frequency modulated 4.5 MHz sound intercarrier. Finally, the FM detector converts it to pure audio which passes through the amplifiers to the speaker. The VA62 produces audio in all three forms. Setting the audio switch to any position except off mixes a modulated sound carrier with the RF and IF video carrier. This combination produces both video and audio when you inject into the antenna or the IF stages ahead of the sound takeoff. The RF-IF signal switch also produces a frequency modulated 4.5 MHz intercarrier to feed into test points between the sound takeoff in the video IF stages and the 4.5 MHz FM detector. Detected audio comes from the VA62's drive signal section. You can feed this signal into any audio stage between the audio detector and the speaker. To isolate a problem, inject the correct type of signal into an audio circuit. If you hear a tone, you know that all the circuits work from the injection point to the speaker. You can move the signal forward and backward along the audio path until you find a stage where you hear the tone when injecting at the output and poor audio when injecting at the input. This is the defective stage. It's pretty easy to see how signal substitution works in audio circuits because they follow a straight line from the antenna to the speaker. The VA62's audio function helps you quickly isolate any audio problem. As we will see next, its video signals work just as easily in the rest of the receiver. 
Video may seem more complicated than audio because of the many parallel circuit paths for sweep, sync, and color. It may surprise you to learn that the VA-62 makes video troubleshooting just as easy as audio, as long as you remember to keep the VA-62 connected to the antenna whenever you are feeding drive signals into any stage after the detector. The antenna signal holds all of the good stages in sync with the substitute signal as you move through one test point at a time. The biggest difference in the video troubleshooting is that you watch the TV screen for results rather than listening to the speaker. In order to isolate trouble in any stage after the detector, you need an exact duplicate of each signal normally found in the circuit. Substitute signals must duplicate the wave shape, signal level, and polarity of the signal at each test point. The VA-62 drive signals duplicate the wave shape of every signal found after the audio or video detectors. In addition, the substitute signals need proper phase and sync timing. Let's see why. Color circuits need two properly phased signals at the demodulator inputs, the chroma separated by the bandpass amplifiers and a properly phased continuous wave 3.58 MHz signal produced by the color oscillator. Substitute signals must be similarly phased. Substitute sync and sweep signals must also be phase locked to the video signal. If they're not, substitution causes out of sync operation, as you see here. The real benefit comes from the phase locking used to keep the substitution signal in sync with the antenna signal. Drive signal requirements vary from a few tenths of a volt to 300 volts peak to peak to match the signal found in any circuit. The drive range switch limits the maximum drive output to 3, 30, or 300 volts to match IC, transistor, or vacuum tube circuits. When in the 300 volt position, this flashing red warning light alerts you to the presence of up to 300 volts peak to peak at the output jack. Swamping circuits let you feed the signal right over the top of the existing signal. The VA-62 takes control of the circuit with all of the components still connected. DC blocking protects components and ensures that the stage operates normally under its own bias, while the VA-62 is substituting for the AC signal. Isolated drive signal outputs allow injection into floating test points. Extensive protection prevents signals in the TV from damaging the VA-62 outputs. Let's now take a detailed look at each drive signal. The video pattern signal is composite video. The frequency response duplicates the normal video detector roll-off to help find color problems caused by poor IF response. Use the video pattern signal to substitute into the video amplifiers the input to the sync or AGC circuits and through the color bandpass amplifiers. The vertical and horizontal composite sync and the vertical integrated sync drive signals isolate sync problems. Here's a typical example. The TV has poor sync. You start by injecting the VA62's composite sync signal at the sync separator output. The sync improves, so you know the problem is in an earlier stage. You then back up and feed the video pattern signal at the sync separator input. The sync problem returns, confirming the sync separator is bad. If the sync had once again improved, you would have known that the set had a sync compression problem in the IF stages. In a similar way, the integrated vertical sync signal isolates problems like vertical roll or jitter. The next four drive signals help find deflection problems. The vertical drive signal takes you from the vertical oscillator to the base of the output transistor. The horizontal transistor, horizontal tube, and horizontal SCR drive signals match the type of output amplifier used. The horizontal keying pulse isolates problems in circuits timed by signals from the flyback, such as AGC or color burst gates. In addition to the signals supplied by the drive signal switch, the VA-62 provides three other outputs, a separate color drive and two signals for VCR service. The separate 3.58 MHz drive signal feeds into any circuit between the color burst gate and the color demodulators. By supplying the signal from a separate output, you can inject it by itself or with another drive signal. 
The 3.58 MHz signal is phase-locked to all the other VA62 signals, so color returns when injecting at the correct test point. The 3.58 signal also swamps out the signal already in the circuit, so you don't need to disconnect components. The final two signals are for VCR service. Before we look at them, we need to mention that many of the signals we've already covered are also of great benefit when servicing VCRs. For example, RF and IF signals isolate tuner and IF troubles in VCRs. The video pattern and 3.58 MHz drive signals let you isolate problems in standard video and chroma circuits. But VCRs also need a few unique signals. The VA62 has two additional outputs, the VCR standard and the servo drive. The VCR standard jack provides a standard 1 volt peak to peak composite video signal into 75 ohms. The VCR standard signal contains the video pattern you've chosen with the video pattern switch. Feed it to the video input of a VCR or monitor with a composite input. The 30 Hz servo drive signal is also phase locked to the other signals. Pulling the servo drive knob reverses the phase for phase sensitive circuits. This signal serves as a reference for troubleshooting VCR servo circuits. The servo drive is separate because of different swamping requirements for the low impedance circuits found in some VCRs. The separate output prevents damage while maintaining phase locking with the other drive signals. Drive signals bring you a new level of troubleshooting effectiveness. They let you identify all of the circuits that work correctly, quickly isolating the one with the problem. Metering expands your capabilities even farther. The digital meter rounds out the VA62 to make it a complete analyzer. It is controlled by the large knob to the right of the black divider line. The VA62 meter has six uses, testing yokes and flybacks, monitoring the drive signals, tracing AC signals, testing DC bias and power supplies, high voltage readings, and testing high voltage multipliers and integrated flybacks. Let's look at these uses. First, yoke and flyback testing. Deflection yokes and flyback transformers often cause sweep problems. Sencor's patented ringer gives reliable good-bad testing of deflection coils. Connect to the coil, select the ringing test position of the meter switch, and then watch the digital readout as you rotate the impedance matching switch through all six positions. A good coil produces a reading larger than 10 in one or more of the switch positions. A bad coil causes all six positions to show a number less than 10. A short in any flyback transformer winding causes all of the other windings to show bad, so you don't need to test each winding separately. Second, drive signal monitoring. You need a way to prevent overdriving stages with too much signal and to know when you are feeding into a shorted component. The VA62 meter monitors the three drive outputs, the drive signals jack, the 3.58 MHz output, and the 30 Hz servo drive. True peak-to-peak -peak readings let you set the drive output to the level shown in a schematic waveform before connecting to the circuit. If you feed a shorted test point, the peak-to-peak -peak level drops off, confirming a bad component. Two of the drive monitor functions measure the current or voltage delivered by the VA62's adjustable power supply. Use this supply to isolate problems in the AGC, AFT, or servo circuits. It is also a handy source of power for special tests, such as SCR testing. Select any voltage from 0 to 35 volts with the control located in the lower left-hand corner. Current limiting to 1 ampere prevents damage from short circuits. Third, AC signal tracing. You can often double your effectiveness by monitoring the peak-to-peak -peak level at one test point while you are feeding a substitute signal into another. The VA62 meter includes an auto-ranged peak-to-peak signal tracing function. It measures all the way to 2,000 volts, so you can even monitor the collector of the horizontal output transistor. The meter's frequency response extends all the way to 4 MHz, so it is even accurate when testing color signals. Fourth, DC bias and power supply measurements. 
the auto ranging DC function simplifies these tests. Simply touch your meter probe to any test point and instantly measure to 2000 volts DC. Fifth, high voltage tests. Your DC measurements may take you to the focus or the second anode voltage. Two optional high voltage probes slip over the supplied meter probe to extend your measuring range to 10,000 or 50,000 volts. Sixth, high voltage multiplier testing. This can be a real time saver. You can test the older style triplers which were separate from the flyback and the newer integrated flybacks which include the high voltage diodes. To test these high voltage components, feed a drive signal into the device while monitoring the DC voltage coming back out. Use the optional TP21210 kV transient protector probe to prevent loading the high voltage multiplier. The VA62 pole chart shows minimum voltage levels for good components. The VA62 is part of a system which lets you specialize in whatever areas of video you want. By itself, the VA62 provides all tests needed to service TV receivers and does a better job on video monitors and VCRs than any other video test equipment. But if you want even higher effectiveness when servicing the latest video circuits, phase-locked accessories let you expand the VA62's capabilities. The VA62 Universal Video Analyzer can serve as the heart of a video analyzing system which does much more than service TV receivers. Phase-locked accessories give you the option of expanding into several other areas that use video signals. The accessories use these two connectors inside the VA62's lead storage compartment. The first connector is an output which feeds signals to the accessories. The optional EX231 expands the output connector to four outputs if you want to use more than one accessory at a time. The second connector is an external modulation input that accepts a standard one volt peak to peak video signal. The video signal applied to this input jack is selected when the video pattern switch is set to the external modulation position. If the video input signal comes from an accessory driven by the VA62, the video pattern will be phase locked to all of the other VA62 drive and test signals. The VC63 VCR test accessory adds more VCR testing signals to the VA62 system. The need for VCR servicing continues to increase because of the large number of VCRs which have been sold. This graph, for example, shows the projected VCR service growth based on sales figures from the Electronic Industries Association, or EIA. If you are part of this growing service field, the VC63 can help you be even more successful. The advantage of supplying these signals from an external accessory rather than building them into the VA62 is the ability to update for future formats. The VC63's exclusive head sub function helps isolate problems related to video heads. It also provides fully modulated drive signals to inject into any of the VCR stages which use an FM signal. The VC63 produces signals for three standard VCR formats. The front panel switch selects beta or VHS signals. If you work on the three quarter inch U-Matic format, a switch on the back of the unit converts the beta signals to U-matic signals. A few VCR manufacturers require an NTSC pattern generator for warranty service in addition to the VA62 patterns. If so, the NT64 NTSC pattern generator accessory produces the two EIA broadcast test patterns, sometimes called NTSC patterns. The full field color bars run from the top to the bottom of the screen. The split field pattern adds four bars at the bottom which represent minus I, white, Q, and black as specified by EIA standards. Since the NT64 receives its main signals from the VA62, its patterns are phase locked to all drive signals. An accessory called the ST65 Video Analyzer Stereo TV Adder provides signals needed for servicing the new stereo TVs and VCRs. EIA figures show that 57% of all television receivers sold in 1987 had stereo or were stereo adaptable, 
Many VCRs have MTS stereo circuits as well. EIA predicts a larger percentage year after year. The patented circuits of the ST65 simulate true MTS or multi-channel TV sound signals. The ST65 also supplies all the signals needed to use signal substitution for every MTS stage from the antenna terminals to the speakers. The RG67 NTSC video monitor adapter provides the signals needed to test RGB computer and video monitors. Phase locked red, blue, green, composite sync, vertical sync, and horizontal sync are separately selectable to match any monitor input system. The RG67 forms an input reference signal which allows you to use the VA62 drive signals for troubleshooting in the internal monitor circuits. You can add one or more of these four accessories to customize your VA62 for the types of video service you want. Other accessories may be added in the future if other video advancements appear. We've now covered all of the features of the VA62 video analyzing system. Before we leave you, we want to give you a time-tested method to learn your system. Learning starts by remembering the way the VA62's panel is laid out for simplified operation. First, remember the panel's four sections. The RFIF signals, the video pattern generator, the drive signals, and the digital meter. The RFIF signals let you do a complete performance test with the back still on the set. It then lets you isolate any problem ahead of the video or audio detectors. The video pattern generator feeds signals to all other sections. The video patterns serve as your reference when using signal substitution to isolate any trouble. The drive signals let you use signal substitution in any stage after the video or audio detector. You inject a signal right over the top of the original signal and watch or listen for an improvement in the original symptom. The digital meter rounds out the VA62 to a complete analyzer. It lets you monitor internal or external signal levels for increased effectiveness. By itself, the VA62 gives you all the tests needed to pinpoint troubles in any TV receiver or composite video monitor. If you want to specialize your video service, phase-locked accessories expand your capability. The recommended troubleshooting methods start with a performance test to identify all the symptoms. Then, use signal substitution to narrow the problem down to one functional stage. If you follow the VA62 troubleshooting guide, this will take four steps or less. After the VA-62 has identified the bad stage, use conventional troubleshooting techniques to find the bad part in that one defective stage. There's just one thing left to mention. When you first sit down to use your VA-62, you'll learn it much faster if you first apply it to a known good set. See how each test works while injecting into good stages. After learning every function and test, you'll be ready to tackle a bad set take your time. Follow the troubleshooting guide and the universal block diagram supplied with the VA62 Universal Video Analyzer. These tools give you a single universal approach to use on every brand and every model of TV service. That's where you'll find your highest efficiency and your best success in modern video servicing. When you choose Sencor, you are choosing test equipment from the leader in American-made analyzing equipment for over 40 years. Every Sencor product is innovatively designed with your time in mind. Each is supported by a team of specialists dedicated to helping you use your Sencor instruments more effectively. Before you look at any other brand of test equipment, consider first the 25 exclusive services that back each Sencor product. Sencor's value-added services fall into five categories. They are innovative product design, after-the-sale support, fast, reliable service, rock-solid guarantees, and finally, versatile purchasing options. Let's take a look at each.
When you choose Sencor, you're choosing innovative products designed to make your testing easier and more reliable. Sencor instruments include exclusive tests guaranteed to save you hours per day. But even with innovative tests, Sencor is easy to use. Sencor designers know it costs you dearly to fiddle with a knob, connect an extra test lead, or interpret inconclusive results. Sencor products are so logical, you usually operate them without instructions. When you want to know more about a test, Sencor gives you easy to learn manuals and simplified operating guides. You don't even worry about errors. Sencor instruments have maximum overload protection. Sencor instruments keep on working when most others are damaged. Best of all, Sencor is manufactured and supported from America's heartland. Every employee strives to produce innovative products of the highest quality. When you choose Sencor, you get after the sales support second to none in the industry. Just dial 1-800-SENCOR anytime you have a question about our products or services. Your call will be answered by a specialist in our customer call center. Amy, could you tell me what happens when a customer calls into our center? We can answer most questions. Calls are rarely transferred to another person or department. If you need specific information, we inform your sales engineer. He has a degree in electronics so that he gives correct answers. Sencor's application engineers are available for questions about using an instrument. Application engineers also bring technical schools to your area. These technical workshops explain how to use Sencor instruments effectively. Between workshops, technical information comes to your mailbox through the industry-exclusive Sencor News. Technical articles explain testing methods and update you on the latest Sencor instruments. Exclusive Tech Tip technical bulletins and Tech Tape video programs provide even more specific information and training. The third way that Sencor differs from all their competition is with our factory direct service. When you send any product for service, it is repaired and on its way back to you within 72 hours, in or out of warranty. Besides being repaired, it is also renovated with the latest circuit updates added automatically under the Sencor 100% Made Right Lifetime Guarantee. Each unit is recalibrated to manufacturing tolerances referenced to Sencor's Traceable Standards Lab. While your unit is in for service, you can even rent a loaner for zero downtime servicing. If you order replacement parts, Sencor guarantees fast delivery. If we cannot ship a part to you within 48 hours, you get the part absolutely free of charge. Advice on servicing your unit is also toll-free call away. Dial 1-800-SENCOR to talk directly with a service technician. The fourth main point, Sencor puts all of this in writing with five rock-solid guarantees. First, every new instrument has Sencor's 30-day proof of performance guarantee to let you know you've made the right choice. If the new instrument doesn't do everything you think it should, return it for a full refund, including shipping. Second, in the unlikely event of problems, each unit has a full one-year product warranty. But it's only fair to tell you that less than 2% of all instruments shipped each year need service. Third, Sencor's five-year rust-proof warranty covers all metal parts. If any part rusts, it will be replaced at no charge. Fourth, every instrument from Sencor is covered by the industry's only made-right lifetime guarantee. This buyer's protection plan corrects any manufacturing defects for as long as you own the instrument. Finally, the service department gives you a brand new 90-day guarantee every time your unit comes here for service.
The fifth major point, Sencor Taylor makes purchasing plans to fit your budget. If you purchase with cash, you get free freight and an extra discount. Sencor's exclusive pay-as-you-grow program lets you increase productivity now while your instruments pay for themselves through increased productivity. Or you can bill accessories or instruments to your Visa or MasterCard for instant orders. Sencor also offers a liberal lease plan. Finally, if you want to evaluate a unit before you buy, check into Sencor's 10-day Try Before You Buy program. Put the unit through its paces to prove it does everything you want. No matter how you order, you get fast delivery. Over 95% of all orders are shipped right from our warehouse the day after the paperwork arrives. These 25 value-added services apply to every Sencor product. You get the finest test equipment, plus a company dedicated to making you more successful. For more than 40 years now, Sencor instruments have been innovatively designed with your time in mind.